Tales Tales. I'm Jill, and today we're reading Remember the Ladies, written by Callista Gingrich and illustrated by Susan Arciero. Hi, Otto! Now, I want you and you to listen to the fun rhymes in this book, but also count the exciting things that some of America's first ladies have done. I mean, we... Yes. What? <gasps> What's a first lady? Oh, Otto, don't be embarrassed. That's a great question. I'm glad you asked it. A first lady is a wife of a president. Yes, and many of our first ladies have done amazing things. One of them rescued a painting of George Washington from a fire, and, and one of them even did the job of president when he was sick. And, well, we're gonna learn all about it. Are you ready? Okay, go get comfortable. <laughs> Let's read. Ellis the Elephant knew every president's tale, how each led America and helped it prevail. But Ellis knew there was more to their success, the brilliant first ladies with whom they were blessed. The first ladies were strong, a diverse group of wives, who each in their own lived remarkable lives. Through good times and bad, they willingly served, so liberty and freedom would be preserved. Martha Washington was quite famous in her day. Her example showed other first ladies the way. After her husband George won the revolution, together they made many contributions. The first lady's role was Martha's invention. She approached her work with care and attention. Her dignity and grace were widely admired. The mother of our country left a nation inspired. Abigail Adams had her husband's respect. She gave frequent advice that was often direct. As our founders created the nation anew, she advised John, remember the ladies too. She asked him to listen to women's voices so they'd be included in major choices. As first lady, Abigail lived where no one had been, at the White House, where she was the first to move in. Dolly Madison was known for beauty and charm. But while in the White House, she had cause for alarm. As the British invaded America once more, the Madisons presided over a nation at war. In Washington, the British set the White House ablaze, and Dolly made the narrowest of great getaways. She saved a national treasure in that close call and rescued Washington's portrait right off the wall. Ellis learned next about Abigail Fillmore, a friendly first lady who many adored. Like Ellis, Abigail was an avid reader, and she shared her love as a national leader. Abigail added a library to the White House, a lasting contribution from Millard Fillmore's spouse. Smart and inquisitive, this former teacher selected books for the library to feature. Abe Lincoln was president throughout the Civil War, and his wife, Mary Todd, knew what the fight was for. She wished to end slavery with full emancipation and encouraged her husband to make a proclamation. Mary tended to troops who were hurt in the fight, lifting their spirits for a cause that was right. She worked hard to keep the U.S. Army supplied so the Union could win and heal the nation's divide. Being First Lady was Nellie Taft's major goal, and she quickly grew into her new leading role. As a partner and hostess, she was first class as was her cow on the White House grass. Nellie left her mark on our capital city with a lasting gift that made it so pretty. As first lady, she planted many cherry trees that still bloom brightly and blow in the breeze. No woman has ever held our nation's top post, but Ellis learned that Edith Wilson came close. She ably assisted when her husband fell ill, so Woodrow Wilson could be president still. Edith was a woman with courage and brains who cared for her husband and then took the reins. With caution and wisdom, she fulfilled his commands. The people unaware, they were safe in her hands. Eleanor Roosevelt was remarkable too, a leading first lady with her own point of view. She made human rights and equality her mission and the first lady's job a full-time position. In meetings with the nation's female reporters, she answered questions from foes and supporters. When Ellis learned of all that Eleanor had done, he thought she should have made a presidential run. Jackie Kennedy was an instant sensation. With glamour and grace, she charmed the whole nation. 
In an era of hope, some people thought, the Kennedys had become the new Camelot. Jackie soon added to this sense of allure when she took Americans on a special tour. For the very first time, everyone could see the beauty of the White House on national TV. Lady Bird Johnson was rather distressed that America's roadsides weren't looking their best. She worked hard to make sure they didn't become littered with trash, all dirty and glum. Congress decided to give Lady Bird the power to line the highways with beautiful flowers. Ellis thought Americans could take great pride in a country that was restored and beautified. Nancy Reagan left her life as a Hollywood star for a stage with a brighter spotlight by far. As a wife, she had Ronald's listening ear and encouraged him in his elected career. While First Lady, Nancy launched a major campaign to put an end to a problem that caused much pain. She wanted drug-free schools where children could grow and urged young Americans to just say no. Laura Bush was a daughter of the Lone Star State, a charming First Lady, her impact was great. This former school teacher was eager to lead a movement to teach every student to read. Laura traveled the country visiting kids in school and helped them to see that books could be cool. Admiring her efforts, Ellis could tell that he and Laura would get along well. Michelle Obama made great historic gains, asking children to stretch their muscles and brains. She challenged them to enjoy daily exercise and led by example to their pleasant surprise. Michelle urged young people to get up and move and encouraged them all to get in the groove. Ellis was soft and he had to admit that with Michelle's advice, he could be more fit. Ellis thought about the first ladies he had met and the others he had not learned about yet. All had their own special talents and traits that they used to make the United States great. They comforted our nation in moments of need and offered leadership to help America succeed. Ellis was grateful for what the First Ladies had done, and now he understood we should remember each one. The end. We love this book because it shows us how America's First Ladies have served our country in very important ways by using their special talents, smarts, and creativity. And these First Ladies each took responsibility of being married to presidents very seriously. They volunteered their time and energy and made our country better, each in their own way. We continue to honor and respect them and be inspired to make our country better in our own way too. Otto, let's see if you remember from the book, which first lady reminded her husband to remember the ladies? Tell me. Yes, Abigail Adams, good boy. She was our second first lady married to President John Adams. Now. Do you promise to remember the ladies? Yes, good boy. Thank you for watching Otto's Tales. Check out some of our other stories too. Keep reading, keep watching, and keep learning. Bye, kids. We're so glad you joined us for today's reading. Storytime is made possible through the generous support of donors like you. You can help keep the stories coming by going to PragerU.com slash donate today.